Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be multiplied unto each and every one of you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your brothers and sisters of the living Christ, unlike secular calendars which begin the new year on January the 1st, the church calendar begins its new year today. This new year of grace will be the last for some people. It may well be my last day or year on earth, yours or someone else whom we know and love. What's more, this new year of grace may be the final one for all people on earth, for this might be the year Jesus returns as judge and savior. So, we embark upon another year of God's grace. Let us thank him for the way he has blessed us and thank him for the way he sustains us. And so we pray. O Holy Spirit, who sanctifies and keeps us in the saving faith, keep the vision and excitement of Christ coming to us and for us so alive in us that we constantly acquit ourselves as people ready for his appearing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank God for the way he has blessed us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, St. Paul writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. These words are very familiar to us Christians. We hear them or hear a slight variation of them every time a pastor begins his sermon. And of course, pastor's sermon explains how that grace and peace from God are freely given to poor sinners through the Lord Jesus Christ who rends the heavens and comes down to earth to save his people from their sins. It is appropriate then as we embark in a new year of grace to be reminded of the way God has blessed us. You see, the love of our Heavenly Father compelled Him to send His only begotten Son into the world to lead Joseph like a flock, shine His face upon us and restore us so that we might be His redeemed children. Indeed, his blood-bought gift of grace and peace tells us that the Father is no longer angry with us. Although we deserve nothing but God's wrath on account of our sins, he smiles upon us and we receive everything from him. Life, forgiveness, and everlasting salvation. Again, the Apostle Paul explains... I give thanks to God, my God, always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all your speech and all knowledge, and even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you still have your bulletin in your hand or in front of you, look at these few short verses in the epistle. And please notice, if you will, how many times the words in Christ, in him, our Lord Jesus Christ, about Christ, he, or some other pronoun or variation of Jesus' name is used. You see, God's spiritual gifts or the charisma that the Holy Spirit bestows on us Christians for building the church are always connected to Jesus Christ our Lord. These spiritual gifts can never be separated from him in his gracious revelation of redemption and salvation. In Christ, we are enriched in every way. So again, thank God for the way he has blessed you in the heavenly realms through his son, Jesus Christ. Thank God for the way he has blessed you in all of your speaking and in all of your knowledge about Christ the King who is coming to earth with righteousness and salvation. 
Thank God that he has blessed you with every spiritual gift as you eagerly await our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Truly, God has blessed us by letting us know that Jesus came into the world not just to bless us, but to, to bless everyone, all people. By the Father's gift of grace and peace offered through faith in Christ, all believers everywhere will be blessed. Our Advent King, the Son of David, Jesus Christ, our Lord, took our flesh and blood as his own, rode triumphantly into Jerusalem, gave his life for ours, and rose from the dead for our justification. That's how much God values you. Into our fallen world, Jesus comes with grace and peace to save you. On his first advent, Jesus came as your redeemer so that you might escape the judgment of his second advent and stand before his father as forgiven children. He offers grace and peace to all people, and by believing, they receive eternal life now and in the life to come. A few years ago, Annette Schroeder and her family had volunteered to host a foreign student in their home over Thanksgiving. Kit, a 20-year-old Chinese girl from mainland China, came to stay two days and nights with the Schroeder family whom she had never met. Kit had come to believe in Christ through the Lutheran Student Center on the campus of the university where she had studied mathematics. She first started to come to the center because it was a quiet place to study. Then she came for the fellowship of other international students and the campus pastor and his staff of volunteers. Soon she was attending worship services and coming to Bible classes and her infant faith started to grow. As host family, the Schroeder th thought it was just another ordinary Thanksgiving, the traditional meal following a Thanksgiving service at church. Later, they received this note from Kit. Thank you so much for your kindness to me. I'll never forget those moments in my life. That was the most wonderful Thanksgiving I ever had. I'm on my way to know Christ better. I hope I'll be in your prayers so that my, pray, my faith will keep growing. Thank you. Kit graduated a month later and returned to her home in mainland China. My Christian friends, Thank God for the way he has blessed you and uses you as his instruments of hospitality to convey his grace and peace to others. In this new year of God's grace, let's look for ways to tell our spouse, our children, neighbors, students, co-workers, and yes, even the new dinner guests about Jesus. Let's invite them to St. John's Lutheran Church and then, God willing, they will thank God for the way he blesses them and confess along with all of us, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. The good news of our Advent King is something to praise God for and something to share with others. For our Lord Jesus Christ brings real blessings. He understands what you're going through as human beings, whether you're a college student far away from home, an elderly person separated from loved ones due to COVID-19, or someone who just can't grasp the grace and peace of God that is shared with them. Jesus Christ, our coming King, understands all of these things we go through in this life, and soon he will return and set all things straight for us. 
Thank God for the way he will sustain you. By faith, we know the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of David, is coming as our judge and Savior to accomplish all things. Again, St. Paul writes, For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. In other words, we are prepared by God through word and sacrament for Jesus' return, and we look forward to his arrival. In every way, we are enriched in Christ to tell the wonders of his love, show Christian hospitality and confess, but now, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter, and we are all the work of your hand. So, my believing friends, thank God for the way he keeps you and enriches you by his grace in all of your speaking and in all your knowledge. You see, the testimony about Jesus, the good news of his birth, life, death, and resurrection keeps us strong to the end so that with all the kids of the world, we too might grow in our faith and be blameless on that great and glorious day. St. Paul says, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you, he will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. Did you hear that? Did you catch it? God is faithful. The gospel is all about Christ, and he is faithful to you. Wherever the gospel of his death and resurrection is proclaimed in truth and purity and the sacraments are administered according to his institution, Jesus is present and remains faithful. The means of grace, those lifelines of God's love, whether it's the red word of, a, of an email devotion from Pastor Neville tomorrow morning, the divine promise of rebirth through the water of holy baptism or his true body and blood in, with, and under the earthly elements of bread and wine in holy communion. Christ is faithful and promises to keep you safe to the end. In the formula of Concord, our Lutheran forefathers said, Holy Scripture assures us that God who has called us will be so faithful that after he has begun the good work in us, he will also continue it to the end and complete it if we ourselves do not turn away from him, but hold fast until the end in that in which he has begun. For such constancy, he has promised his grace. That is, he has promised his riches at Christ's expense. Today, as we embark upon another year of grace, cling in faith to Christ and thank God for the way he blesses us and sustains us to the end. With the hymnus, we declare, see how God for us providing gave his son and life abiding. He our weary steps is guiding from earth's woe to heavenly joy. Oh, the joy beyond expressing when by faith we grasp this blessing and to thee we come confessing that our freedom thou hast wrought. Amen. So be it. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus now and forevermore. Amen. In our prayer of the church, we remember those listed for us under healing and comfort. Uh, we add to that list St. John's member, Joan Priggy, as she is hospitalized. Uh, also pray for Velma Koenig as uh, she is hospitalized and Denise Ebers. 
We pray for those who serve us in our nation's military and as emergency personnel. And we pray for all those affected by COVID-19, including residents and staff at Redbud Care Center and Garden Place. Uh, we join together in the prayer of the church on page five of our worship folder, we stand. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. To you, O Lord, we lift up our souls and in you we put our trust. Do not let us be ashamed of our hope, but come quickly to us. Sustain us by your Holy Spirit that we may have joy at the second advent of Christ our Savior, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, enrich your saints in every way as we enter another church year. Encourage the preachers of your word and all who hear that the testimony about Christ may be confirmed again among us. Give boldness and faithfulness to our synod president, our district president, our circuit visitor, and all pastors and church workers in Christ. As you have called us into the fellowship of your Son, so sustain us as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, preserve and bless all Christian households, that husbands and wives would live in love and service to each other, that fathers and mothers would diligently bring up their children in your fear, and that children would honor their parents and be well equipped for service to their neighbors in this life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, be with the governing authorities and enable them to preserve peace and order in our nation. Hear our prayers for our president, our governor, our military and police, all other civil servants, as well as all newly elected officials and those who serve us as emergency responders, firefighters and healthcare workers. Increase the spirit of unity and cooperation among the people of our land and the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, behold in mercy all who are in any danger, trouble, sickness, or need. Hear our prayers for the sick and suffering, especially Kenneth, Kenny, Ed, Barb, Ron, Paul, Joan, Dennis, Ken, Julie, Lori, David, Lori, Roger, Elda, Ralph, Pat, Barb, Boniface, Merlin, Terry, Velma, Denise, all those at Redbud Care Center, Garden Place, and others who are struggling with COVID-19 and those we now name in our own hearts. Give health to our world by mercifully and quickly bringing this pandemic to an end. Comfort all who mourn, especially those we know who have lost loved ones to physical death and sustain them with a confident hope in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, as your son once entered humbly into Jerusalem to the cries of Hosanna, so send him to us according to his promise in the Holy Sacrament, that we may eat his body and drink his blood in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of our sins and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join together in the singing of the offertory. <clears throat> the Lord for all his benefits to me will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord the cup of salvation Lord in the presence of all his people 